Hello MCU and Star Wars fans. Today we're going to look at the timeline approaches that both the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Star Wars use when it comes to new releases of movies and TV shows in their timeline. I think we're going to find that they have very different approaches and that each might be able to pull a few tricks from how the other one handles things. So let's dive right in and see how the MCU and Star Wars handle their timeline approach differently. We'll start with Marvel, and Marvel has for the most part been linear or forward-thinking in its timeline release strategy. If you look at the fact that Iron Man came out in 2008, and now in the present year of 2025 in the MCU, we've moved all the way up to She-Hulk, with for the most part all the stories moving forward in the timeline. And in fact, if you look at things like the release strategies of Phase 5 and Phase 6, Almost every single entity coming out, movie and TV show, are in the future, forward. Uh, now, Blade looks like it might be in the past, might be in the early 1900s, and Secret Invasion might give us some indication of what happened during that five-year blip period, which would be awesome if that's true, but everything else is moving the timeline along forward. And in fact, Marvel is great at dropping seeds and hints about future stories. I mean, the Young Avengers, we've been seeing them slowly forming for quite some time now. Uh, the Thunderbolts have formed over time uh, with their big movie coming out uh, in Phase 5. Uh, the street-level heroes, you know, they're promising these concepts of team-ups between Daredevil and Spider-Man, which would be awesome. Um, the Midnight Suns is a team from the comics that might be slowly being hinted at. Of course, the Multiverse Saga, which is really all of Phases 4 through 6, has slowly been building over several movies and TV shows. And now we're getting monsters, another um, concept being thrown into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the strategy is genius, right? They keep dropping these seeds, which makes you want to know, okay, what's next? What's next? You know, what's, what's going to happen further down the storyline? But for the most part, Marvel hasn't gone into the past with their storylines. Now they have, but let's call them prequel stories. You know, stories happening earlier in the timeline are basically few and far between. Now, you could argue I Am Groot is kind of a prequel because it is going back to 2014 in the timeline. Uh, even Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was released well after Volume 1, but happens right after it. It's kind of part two to the movie. So, you know, you could kind of consider these prequels, but I wouldn't really consider them prequels. Instead, you have to look at things like Captain America the First Avenger and Agent Carter's TV show and the one-shot that both take place during World War II. And then, of course, Captain Marvel, which takes place in the mid-90s. Now, in each case, uh, the prequels were, were pretty well received as being prequels. People may or may not have liked elements of the stories of the movies or um, TV shows. That, that's different. My point is, the fact that they were prequels, that was fine. People enjoyed learning a little bit about the past that we didn't already know. But that kind of changed with Black Widow. Um, again, whether or not you liked the story... It's the fact of how people responded to just the fact the movie was coming out after um, Black Widow had died in Endgame. I mean, we saw comments from Vox and The Verge and Forbes and on and on and on saying, too late, too late, too late. So it wasn't whether or not the story was any good. It was just, you're telling me about a character that's dead. Why do I care, right? You should have told me this story when she was alive. That's when I wanted to hear it. I don't want to hear it now. So keep this concept in mind, because we're going to see that Star Wars' approach to dead characters in the timeline is very, very, very different. But it seems like Marvel fans and reviewers don't like this prequel concept, especially if the character has died. Um, and that's a shame, because there's a lot of stories that we could go into the past and tell. I mean, I would pay good money to see Captain America and how he returned those Infinity Stones, particularly giving the Soul Stone to the Red Skull. Oh my goodness, that would be priceless. Um, Isaiah Bradley is a great character that was created uh, and introduced, rather, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Don't just tell me about his past, show me some of those things that happened. How about the Secret Avengers? You know, Black Widow, Falcon, Captain America. What were they doing between Civil War and Infinity War? Maybe some early Hank and Janet Pym, Ant-Man and the Wasp storylines from the 80s. Um, I'd still love to learn more about the formation of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, Agent Carter led right up to it, the series, uh, and the one shot. But it, I'd like to see how it was like back then. And then how about Groot and uh, Rocket? Uh, tell me about their adventures before they joined the Guardians. You know, I fear that Marvel is going to be afraid to go into the past. 
um, because of what happened with Black Widow. But we'll see. Uh, just it's important that Marvel keeps its options open. It's great to keep telling these stories leading into the future. Uh, that's been their bread and butter. But, you know, don't forget the fact that there are some really good things from the past that people would like to know. All right, now let's look at Star Wars, and we're going to see how very, very different it, it is to uh, Marvel's approach. In fact, look at the fact that Star Wars timeline basically started in the middle I mean, from that opening crawl across the screen uh, when Star Wars was released in the uh, late 70s, you see episode four? Wait, four? What about one through three? And in fact, the movie isn't called Star Wars. It's actually called A New Hope. Fascinating, right? I mean, from the opening seconds of the first Star Wars movie, you're left going, I want to know about the past. Tell me more crazy. I mean, I, I don't know how much of this was George Lucas really thinking this out, or he just backed into it. But either way, Star Wars from day one has made us very interested in the past. And in fact, let's look at how their timeline has evolved. Now, for those that aren't huge uh, Star Wars fans, you might not have seen the BBY and ABY uh, terms. Uh, they did, for the first time, show up in Andor, Andor uh, episode one. We've never seen them before, uh, officially, in one of the movies or TV shows. So BBY stands for Before the Battle of Yavin, and ABY stands for After the Battle of Yavin. Yavin is the planet in A New Hope that the Death Star was orbiting when it got destroyed. So you can imagine the destruction of the Death Star is pretty much the zero point of the Star Wars timeline. It's kind of like how in real life our timeline is based on uh, the birth of Christ, uh, so B.C. and A.D. This is kind of the similar thing, B.B.Y. and A.B.Y. So A New Hope is zero. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is three A.B.Y., so three years after the Battle of Yavin. And then finally Return of the Jedi, four A.B.Y. Now for a long time we kind of thought, this is all we're going to get, right? I mean, lots of great books, uh, some TV shows, video games, you know, all kinds of other things Star Wars related, but it kind of felt like this was it. Until finally, Phantom Menace comes out. Notice 32 BBY. It was 32 years before A New Hope. Along comes Attack of the Clones then. 10 years forward in the timeline, so 22 BBY. And finally, Revenge of the Sith, 19 BBY. But it didn't take long for people to say, wait, what happened in between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith? I want to know more about the Clone Wars. So it kind of filled that gap between those two. And then due to the success of the Clone Wars, along comes Star Wars Rebels that get, fills in a little bit more information leading right up to A New Hope. Notice it covered from 5 to 1 BBY. Then finally, we get Episode 7. So we had the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, and now we're getting the sequel trilogy. And it moved all the way to 34 ABY, so 34 years ahead of A New Hope. Then we jumped right back in time again with Rogue One, fantastic movie, direct prequel to A New Hope. Then we jump forward to The Last Jedi. We pick up episode uh, eight, which is also in 34 ABY. And then we jump back again, and we get Solo, and we learn more about Han Solo's early days, uh, 10 BBY, so 10 years before A New Hope. Uh, then we get Resistance, which, similar to Clone Wars and Rebels, told us a little bit about uh, directly leading up to Force Awakens, Episode 7. And then finally, we get the end of the sequel trilogy, taking place one year forward in 35 ABY. And then we immediately head into the past. A Mandalorian, fantastic series, Mandalorian taking place 7 to 9 ABY. Then we go even further into the past with The Bad Batch, which took place right after Revenge of the Sith, Episode 3. Then we jump forward again to Book of Boba Fett, happening at the same time as Mandalorian, only to jump back and pick up Obi-Wan and what he was up to between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And then finally, we have the current series going on, Andor, which uh, covers uh, basically the same period of time as Rebels and will lead directly into A New Hope and Rogue One. Now, just for the minute, let's look at these last two things that came out, Obi-Wan and Andor. Both are dead characters in the timeline. I mean, we're, we're, we're up to 35 ABY now, theoretically, but we're still talking about characters who died, well, in Obi-Wan's case, when the first movie came out, right? He died in A New Hope uh, in 77, 78 time frame in the real world. So years ago, his character's been dead. And Andor, we know Andor died in Rogue One, right? I'm, that's not a spoiler, that's a fact. So we're literally following a character who we know is going to die. 
Yet have you heard any fans or any reviewers saying, too late, too late, too late. You should have told us Obi-Wan's story before he died. You should have told us Andor's story before he died. No, no, for whatever reason, Star Wars has mastered the ability to make us want to learn about characters who, yeah, are dead and have been dead in some cases for decades, you know. So it's just fascinating how different Star Wars and Marvel are when it comes to telling these stories in the past. And actually, Star Wars continues to do this. I mean, look at the next five things that were announced at D23. Every one of them are in the past. Whether it's uh, Tales of the Jedi during the prequel trilogy, Bad Batch right after the prequel trilogy, or then the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and Skeleton crew all happening during the Mandalorian era. era. Notice none of them are happening around the time of the sequel trilogy. And I understand, people had mixed views about those characters. But isn't it interesting that Star Wars has basically just left them behind? Said, okay, we're not, we're not going to tell any more stories about them. And that's fine. If they really weren't well-received, then, then so be it. I didn't think they were that bad, but I, I realized many people weren't, weren't happy with the sequel trilogy. But the bottom line is this. At some point, continuing to tell stories only in the past and not advancing to the Star Wars timeline forward and the stories forward, it, it, it's going to reach an end. You know, people are going to finally start to say, that's enough. I, I, want, I want to move forward. And if, therefore, if Star Wars isn't investing time in either these characters or, or even new ones, it's going to hurt. It, it will hurt them in the end. Whereas, again, we saw with Marvel, they were always looking forward, always teasing things, but not so much looking in the past. So, the bottom line is this. Both the MCU and Star Wars can learn from each other. They can realize, you know, the benefits of forward-thinking stories, of hints towards the future, but also of exploring the past and, and the rich history that hasn't, hasn't yet been fully unveiled. And here's the real irony. They're both run by Disney. Isn't that wild that the same parent company has two radically different strategies, and I would argue radic radically different fan bases in how they want to see their timelines unfold. Really quite amazing. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, and learned a little bit about how both timelines are the same and different. Uh, if you liked the video, then uh, click that button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Lots more content you can watch. And let's all spend time together watching the ever-expanding, ever-growing MCU and Star Wars timelines.